I wonder this morning if you know about my Jesus. Have you heard the news that he's risen? Jesus Christ saved my life. And not just saved my life from anything physical here on earth, but he saved my life for eternity. And maybe you're asking yourself some questions today, like who is this Jesus? Or who is this Jesus that he could forgive my sins? Or maybe you're asking yourself, what do I need saving from? Or maybe you're even asking yourself, what do I have to do so that I can be saved? Or maybe you already know the answer to all of the above, and God wants to remind you afresh of what he's done for you. Well, today, through the passage that we just read earlier, we hopefully find a lot of answers that we're looking for. And the story of Nicodemus is especially an interesting one to me. And recently, I had a new insight over it. Um, and yes, although I know it's not fully biblical, I cannot stop myself from thinking, what if that was actually true? And that was how it actually happened. And some of you already know about this TV show that I'm on about most of the time. I'm not trying to advertise it because I'm not getting any money for it. So I'm not advertising the show. But it's a really good program that shows some things that are not in the Bible. It is about Jesus. It is about the Bible. But it shows us some different perspectives about the people around Jesus. Um, and please hear me right when I say this. We watch TV shows for recreational purposes. But please don't come and tell me that you believe everything that you see in it before checking with scriptures. Right? So read your Bible. Believe the Bible. And watch The Chosen, because that's what it's called, for recreational purposes. Right? Not instead of reading the Bible. And there's a story of one of the episodes that we saw recently about Nicodemus and Jesus and that encounter that they had. And that part is biblical, how they met at nighttime and it's so beautifully made. And the actors are so good that they make you feel the stuff that goes on around them, you know. And Jesus says to him that they'll be in the market square somewhere um, at the specific time next day together with the disciples. And he asked him to go and follow Jesus. So they part ways. Nicodemus goes back to his house. Jesus goes to, to, to his own stuff. And Nicodemus talks to his wife. And his wife's reply, he didn't give her the whole detail, but his wife's reply was, Nicodemus, I really love our life. You know, he was trying to hint at things like, oh, what if the Messiah that we're waiting for is not actually going to lead us into a battle against the Romans and all that side of it. You know, starting to doubt some of the things that he already knew. And the next morning, you know, Jesus and his disciples were in the square, getting ready to leave. And then one of them asks, we're, I think we're, all of us are here. Are we going to go or are we waiting for someone else? And Nicodemus was around the corner in the TV show, right? Listening to them. And his heart was divided. He didn't know what to do. I don't know if you ever had that feeling before. Like, God, I really want to follow you with everything that I have. But at the same time, I'm also a bit cozy here, what I am. I'm comfortable in the world. I can't fully commit to you right now. Maybe that's you today. I don't know. But Jesus says, a friend of mine was supposed to come and join us. And then he says out loud, if there's someone else here that wants to follow me, you know, let them come out now. And then it gets to the good part. And Nicodemus is around the corner. And he starts crying. He starts sobbing. He's against the wall, and then you can hear Jesus saying, almost in a whisper to himself, Oh, Nicodemus, you've come so close. That's the good part. That's the punchline. Oh, Nicodemus, you've come so close. Now, again, don't believe this instead of what the Bible actually says about Nicodemus, but it does give me a fresh perspective over things. And why am I telling you all this? Well, three reasons, actually. First of all, because it's a really good show, so you should watch it. Second, simply because it's connected to the story of Nicodemus in the Bible. But also, number three, because it points to us, to the very important part of the Bible, which is connected to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is how to enter heaven and how to be born again. It's the whole reason why we even celebrate Easter for. Jesus died to make a way for us to enter heaven, the only way, which is through him. But through the passage about Nicodemus that I revisited, I actually discovered that we can answer those questions from the beginning that I asked. Those questions that maybe you might have today. And if you're already a follower of Christ and know all that, that's great. Rejoice. Maybe God wants to 
give you something else today and bring you a freshness to that passage. And if you're not a follower of Christ or have never heard of him before, maybe today for the first time you'll discover the true meaning of Easter. And Easter is about what Jesus has done for all humankind. And so that our sins will be forgiven. That's hard to understand, I know, but what Christ has gone through points us to what we should do and following and trust in him so that we can go and join him in heaven. But in order so that that change would happen, we first need to understand that we're all sinners, that we all have fallen away from God's standard. We all have fallen short. And in order to change, we need to understand that there is something wrong going on first, right? And in the Old Testament, the part of the Bible that, that not a lot of people tend to visit too much because they focus too much on the New Testament, God has made it very clear about what sin is. It is simply put, the things that we do or we think about that goes against God's divine law. And at Easter, we're reminded that through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, that that sacrificial system where they needed sacrifice animals is, is not needed anymore so that God would forgive our sins. Now, that does not mean that there's no more sin in the world, but that the way that God deals with sin is now different. And instead of people having to sacrifice animals, Jesus, the Son of God, has become now the ultimate sacrificial lamb for the whole world. Before Jesus, only the Israelites were called the people of God, but after Jesus died and came back to life, everyone that believes will have eternal life in him. And will be called God's people, God's followers. The whole world has that chance now. If you go back more in history, you have the story of Adam and Eve. And that's where you understand more about sin. And where the first humans disappointed God. And because of their disobedience, they sinned against him. And they were thrown out of heaven. And everyone ever since then, including us today here, carried that burden of that original sin with us ever since we're born. So sin separates us from God. Sin is what condemns us. And it's because of sin, together with denying who Jesus is and not wanting to follow him, that humankind ends up in hell. And hell is a real place. We know from scriptures where there's eternal fire and all that. But that was prepared for the devil and his angels. And unfortunately, we end up there by not following Christ. But you need to know today that God so loved the world that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, so that we could escape that place and not go there. And if you follow him, if you give your life to him, if you obey him and leave everything behind, you will go and be with Christ one day in heaven. The story of Easter tells us who Jesus is. He is truly God and truly human and has died for the sins of humanity. But that's not the whole story. The whole story is that in order so that we would know that Jesus was who he said he was, that God raised him from the dead the third day. He rose victorious, showing us that death has no hold on him and that indeed he is the son of God. I wonder, do you know him? Do you know that Jesus is who he says he is? And that over his lifetime here on earth, over hundreds of prophecies of the Old Testament were brought to fulfillment. Do you know that because of his sacrifice on the cross, we now stand a chance to go to heaven? Do you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? And that there's no other way to heaven but through him. Do you know that Jesus Christ asked the Father and he sent us an advocate, the Holy Spirit... The spirit of truth that is our seal as followers of Christ, that we belong to him. This is who Jesus Christ is. And this is what Jesus Christ has done for us. You also need to know about Jesus from the Bible is that he's been given authority to forgive sins. And if you follow Jesus, you can, you know, if, if you don't follow, sorry, Jesus, you can be the best person you are. And have a clean criminal record. You will still not enter heaven without him. I wonder do you know my Jesus? The Bible says that the same Jesus that is now in heaven at the right hand of the father. Would one day come back to judge the world. 
and to bring an end to earth on that day or until then. Even on the day that we physically die here on earth, it will be too late. Too late for someone to follow him. Too late to change your mind. Too late for being sorry for not doing it earlier. I wonder what you think. I wonder if you think maybe the same thing happened to Nicodemus. If he didn't have that change of heart that Jesus was talking about. If he didn't become born again of water and of spirit. You know the true meaning of Easter. So please don't wait until it's too late. Don't be one of those that hears Jesus in an echo. Saying, oh Nicodemus, you've come so close. Jesus doesn't want that for you. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save it. He sent it, he sent him to save the world through him. Verses 18 says, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. And these events were happening before Jesus' trial and crucifixion, and the passage not only talks about those that would not believe in him then and kill him, but it talks about us now, today. The people that you know of, maybe, or that we know of, that don't accept Jesus Christ in their lives, nor follow him. You know what the sad, sad reality is? Not that only people don't believe in Christ or that they deny Christ or... or no, the sad reality is that the people of Christ nowadays, more and more, tend to not do what the apostles did, what the disciples did when they saw that the tomb was empty and they ran to see the tomb was empty and then they ran to tell everyone and they ran all over the world and they preached the message of salvation, the message of redemption and, and, and forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. And if you don't know about sin and you don't accept that you are a sinner in need of Christ's forgiving love by the shedding of his blood on the cross, there's no need for salvation, is there? But the moment you realize that you're in deep trouble, you go running to Jesus. You go to him, not half of the heart or half of you, but if you go to him wholeheartedly, you will become a citizen of heaven, a follower of Christ. And so the last question that we're given an answer today is this. What do I have to do so that I could be saved? Well, the answer is, Quite simply put, nothing. Absolutely nothing. There is nothing you and I can do in order to win a place in heaven. And nothing is enough to help you enter heaven without Jesus. I wonder, do you really know him? Do you know that this is a free gift and that you don't have to work for it, but that Jesus has done everything for you already? Do you know that Jesus forgives every sin as well? All the things that you think of, all the things that you're doing or saying, or Jesus can forgive them all if you come to him. You know that Jesus said that the road to heaven is narrow. And so not so many people walk on it. But the road to destruction is wide. And many people are walking on it. Those that walk on the narrow path, are those that not only follow Jesus, but those that love him and obey his commands and listen to him. And they go and tell others about him in their working places. And they go and tell everyone else that they know about this Jesus that is risen and we celebrate around Easter. Jesus forgives every sin. But on the wide path, there are those just like the Pharisees and the leaders that denied who Jesus was. And the same today, those that deny who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Remember, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. And you become born again of water and a spirit when you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you believe in your heart that God raised him the third day from the dead. You remember in the beginning how I said about Jesus saving my life. Is because he chose me and I chose him. I became born again. And although I thought I was a good person, had a clean criminal record, I still do have a clean criminal record because I'm on camera so I can't do it. <laughs> but I do. 
And I thought I'm the best person ever. I lived my life like any other normal human being. There was nothing wrong with that. I thought I'd go to heaven. Until I found out from my minister that was actually not true. He's retired now, bless him. But he told me that I'm actually not saved. And that I need to understand that. He told me the truth. And that's why every time I have the opportunity, I tell people the truth. Because I know that the truth changed me. He told me all about it. And I have made a commitment to Christ. And although I knew all about him, there is to be known. I was an Orthodox. I was a religious person. I knew my Bible. I knew a lot of the things. I did not ever commit to a relationship with Jesus Christ. I wonder if that's you today. John's verdict in John 3 is this. That light has come into the world. That is Jesus. But the people, the people loved darkness instead of light. Because their deeds were evil. And everyone who does evil hates the light. Because their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. I want to tell you today that if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. I wonder, do you really know him? Not like how I thought I knew him. Do you know that with God nothing is impossible? Read the Bible and you find out. That's why it is so easy for us to believe that Jesus raised from the dead. Because we have all that history with God and what he's done in the past. So we truly believe that and we celebrate it at Easter about Jesus Christ. And how the women went to the tomb and the tomb was empty and then they went and told the disciples and then... You know, Jesus showed himself to Peter and the disciples, to James, to Saul, who became Paul, and then more than 500 brothers at once. And you need to know that this Jesus is for everyone. And I honestly don't know exactly what happened to Nicodemus. You might think or know for sure that he was an example of a born-again person, follower of Christ. Now, I tend to believe that's the case as well. But that doesn't make me, you know, being sure of it. But that's what I believe. I think that the fact that he took care of Jesus' body together with Joseph of Arimathea, the Bible tells us, points to the fact that they were not afraid to witness to people anymore. And they were not following their former beliefs. They would have been unclean for Passover when Jesus died, but they didn't care anymore. Because Jesus became the ultimate Passover lamb for them as well. You know, when I look at Nicodemus' story, I see a happy ending story. I think he was born again because if he wasn't, remember his Pharisee friends and the leaders and all that, they just crucified and killed Jesus. But he was one of them that said, you know, not really, I'm not sure about this. They didn't want to do anything, you know, with, with, they they didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus, his his friends, Nicodemus' friends. But Nicodemus took care of the body And buried it according to Jewish customs. And I tend to believe that yes, he left it all behind. And started following Jesus. And again, that's all, you know, presuming. But what I do know for sure is that Jesus is for everyone. That he came for the prostitutes. He came for the tax collectors. He came for the sinners. And he came for the Pharisees and leaders as well. Gave everyone a chance. And he also gave a chance to Nicodemus. He told him about heaven and how to get there. And what we do know for sure is what we know about ourselves. That's what's in our heart. Only we know and God, of course. So the question today as we're celebrating Easter is this. Have you been born again? And by that I mean what Jesus meant. Did you experience that inner change of heart? If you met Jesus, has your heart changed when you became a Christian? And if you're not born again, come today by faith to Jesus. Give your life to him. Accept him in your life as Lord and Savior. So that you as well can have the same assurance. So that you as well can become born again. 
And if you are born again, that's great. Rejoice today. As the one who saved and raised Jesus from the dead will also raise you from the dead on that last day. And know that when you die here on earth, you will go straight to God's presence into heaven. Not because of anything that you're doing, not because of anything that I'm doing, but because what he's done for us at the cross. We believe that and we hold it in our hearts. That's who my Jesus is. And I hope and pray that you too will be counted among the saints with those that are part of his followers. Now you might be here today thinking, what does any of this have to do with me? Because I've been born again already years ago and so on. Then my question to you today is this as well. If you're born again, are you living your life at its fullest? Or are you just alive? What if for some of us inside, it's still Friday? Jesus is still dead in the tomb. All hope is lost. I want you to know today that all hope is not lost. Our Savior lives and he defeated death. Why? Not so that, that, that we would carry on in just being alive. No. But he died so that you and I can live and live life at its fullest. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching with Church Baptist Church YouTube. If you're new to our channel, why not subscribe? That way you can know when we post new content. Make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know how we can pray for you, what spoke to you today, and where you're writing from. And also share these messages with one of your friends if you find them encouraging and inspiring in any way. Hey, listen, if you're able to, why not join us in one of our services at our physical location? All our details are on the website. I'll see you there. God bless you.